Hey everyone, this is Celtic Fox here from East Coast Mods, now known as East Coast Services. And today we're going to look at the Dark Flash Phantom gaming case. I picked up this case for my daughter. Um, I have to excuse the audio and the video, it's kind of raw. I'm just using my cell phone and a pair of Bluetooth speakers slash headphones uh, in my ears. So. I just wanted to give you guys a quick look around the case. I wanted to give you guys an idea of what it looks like. Um, so if you choose to buy this case or if you'd like to buy this case, um, it's on Amazon right now. It goes for around $155.98 with a $20 coupon. So it brings it down to $135.98. Um, and so let's take a look at the case real quick. Um, uh, let's go over here for a minute. We've got my digital caliper here with me. Um, as the last on the front and both sides of the case. Uh, so let's take a look at the front of the case first. Turn it here. Make sure that's in camera angle. Pardon my French. Yes, it is. All right. It does come installed with six uh, pre installed fans and again, glass, glass, glass. Um, the front IO port here. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's just peel that off. There. All right. So now, gotta be careful when taking these panels off. Um, I already taken them off once. Um, I still have the protective um, plastic on the the glass for right now, just to keep it from getting scratched or anything like that. Micro scratches and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna let that on there. Now, these thumb screws. Um, Hear the pros and cons at the end of the video. Um, what I think about this case uh, and some of its oddities that there is. If you look at these thumb screws, let me try to bring this into the camera so you can see it a little closer. Um, I'm gonna bring this up real close. Notice that. Look at the thread on that. So my camera will focus. That is the okay. We'll go up here. Maybe we can. There we go. Very little thread on that thumb screw there we go look at that very little thread on that thumb screw so if you have thumb screws that you can use that um for these these are flat uh they're a little glossy flathead type screws very small uh, thread size i'm not sure what the if they're three millimeter thread or what they look like a three millimeter thread um but they are very, very small, as you can see. So there's four of them on the front. And like I said about this case, you have to be careful taking the glass off because once a thumb screw comes out, the only thing on here that's holding on the glass is the rubber grommet. Uh, so again, that's this one. I always place my thumb up here to hold the glass in place because the rubber grommets that they do go inside the glass right here. So they do kind of hold the paint, the glass on. However, once you take the last thumb screw off, like this, the glass literally will just fall right out. Fall right out like that. So let's put this down here. All right. Now, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four pre installed fans. They are 120. Uh, there is, and I'll get you a close up of this in a minute when I take the camera off its stand. Um, there are holes, uh, mounting holes for 140s uh, in the case. Um, but unfortunately, if you look, you only have space for two 140s one here, one here, because there is no holes up here for 140. And there's no holes down here for 140. And again, this is the 120 that's mounted here. They're mounted here. And then they're mounted in the back along this bracket, which again later on in an upcoming video when I take the fans out, I will show you exactly that mounting bracket. Um, so let's turn to uh, the side. Let's go over the right side here. Ugh. Case weighs about 27 pounds. Uh, again, careful with the thumb screws because they're all the same all the way through. 
Um, it weighs 27 pounds, and that's probably because the, the majority of the weight that's made up of this case is the timber glass. And the timber glass is, and I checked it with my thing, is 4 millimeters thick. Uh, so it's a very thick timber glass. It's very nice. Um, it is, uh, has a, a um, tint to it, so it's not or like a smoky tint to it. Again, this glass, the only thing holding it in is just a little spot on that. Um, the top also has a magnetic dust filter, which we will look at later on. But okay, so I take the can, thing off. Be very careful holding the glass because again, and then this is what looks like to appear to be either etched on or something but it's you run your finger across it and you know it's not coming off so that's on there it's a little logo they have the dark flash now again inside we have an instruction manual and uh let's get this in the camera right here there we go and it talks about different things uh for your power supply your side panels um Placements for your hard drives, 3.5s, placements for your SSDs, uh, and so forth and so forth. So that's the, that's that there. Um, you can see poking out here is the USB 3.0, the 2.0 headers, and then your front IO port connectors are here. Um, again, you can see that they, the way they wired these fans up currently is here, here, here. And be up here, along with the I.O. port. Um, and there's a, obviously a fan cable here. Um, because if I turn it just enough, you have two 120 millimeter fans mounted here in the rear. Um, and things like that. So let's turn this for a second here. Now again, I'm not sure yet. I haven't really looked at to see if this is removable. I don't think this is, I think this is riveted in. Um, it appears to be, yes, riveted in. It is riveted in. There is a place for three 120 millimeter fans that would fit that would fit up top here on the top of the PSU shroud. Fit there. There is a pass-through hole here for cables, pass-through hole here, 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 uh, for your power cables and such. There's pass-through cables here for SSDs, and one of the oddities right off the bat that you can notice is that it has mounting brackets for uh, a 3.5 drive cage uh, in case you would like to add another or two 3.5 drives on a drive cage that would mount to this spot. But again, you would sacrifice losing one of your fans in that area because of that. All right, so let's spin this around. So let's take a look at the back. Okay, so again in the back you have your IO port here for your rear IO port. You can see the the um, various mounting options for 140 or 120 here in the rear. Um, it looks to me though, according to the box, I can have to check the specs, but to me it looks only like you could put one 140 in here or Actually, I don't even think you could fit a 140 in there. Think about it. Because these 120s go right to the edge. So, you can mount a 140, I mean a 120 rear fan in here with a radiator. All in one cooler if you want to. Or two 120 fans here. Um, these again are pre-installed. There's a little uh, place here where it looks like they're using for cable management. Uh, the power supply is down here, obviously. Another thing, we have to go back around this corner real quick. Um, I don't see any rubber mounts for where the power supply would sit onto. There's a very large, generous cutout for your back of your um, processor and for the mounting bracket for your uh, coolers for your um, motherboard. So let's spin this around. Oof. And on the back, yes, you do have three, four, five, six, seven, 
PCI ports there. And get this. Again, be very careful when removing these thumb screws because the threads on them are very small. And there the glass will come right off very easily. Always keep your thumb in the place where you can hold the glass onto. You don't just have it take, it just falls right off. Alright. Let's put this one down here. Alright, now. Um, I'm going to bring this camera in a little bit. Uh, do, 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 do. Hold on, I'm going to bring you guys in a little bit. I am so sorry for that. I'm going to move you down a little bit. All right, so pre installed is also the. It's on Velcro. So. <laughs> but, um, yep, so here's what we have we have a. Let's see if I can okay, let's reset that motherboard sink. That's a reset. That's okay. Put those two aside that way. Now these fans are proprietary, which means they are connected to the to the unit in a fashion that uh you can't just connect them to the motherboard. They have a proprietary connector. I think you can see that right there. My, my hit. If I can do this right here. Yeah, so it's like a five to six pin. It also has a little clip on the top, as you can see, maybe in the camera. It's a little clip, kind of like a SATA clip, that holds the cables connected into the unit. So just when you're going to open this case, and if you're going to take these fans out, make sure you push down on the tab. Don't just pull out onto the out onto the unit because then what you'll do is you'll break the wires on the fans. They are very thin wires. I will note that down compared to regular case fans. And the wires are very thin. Um, not sure what gauge they are, but they are very thin. And they do hold very tightly in here. So, um, let's do a little wiggle and get them out. Uh, this, this is also, you gotta get your, like, your thumbnail in there to release the clip so that you can then disengage the unit. All right, let's see. If I can do that again, because yeah, in this case everything is stuck. All right, so all right, so I'm gonna take a look at using. Where is it? Where is it going? Let's try using this. Ooh, it's warm in this house today. Just a minute, Rock, um, that's my cat, Rocky. One more, just a minute. She likes to meow sometimes. All right. So this is not coming out. So, all right. Well, let's see if I can bring you down to the down to it a little bit. All right. So this is the hub that it is included in this uh, case. It comes with these fans. And again, you have a motherboard sink connector, which is like, it connects up to your motherboard sink, which I believe is a three pin. You have a reset switch again, which is up here on the top IO. I will point that out in a little bit. It says LED and LED, but there's obviously, there's a connector for these LEDs, which again, looks like a three pin pin type of connector which is most unusual ah there we go finally got it all right let's bring this up here a little closer okay so this says led and as you can notice it's a three pin design so that must mean for addressable led lights there we go right there you can see that that's led 
LED and LED, so addressable LEDs should be able to plug into this controller. Or it could be uh, Dark Flash makes an addressable LED that will mount into this area here. And again, you can see the, uh, the proprietary uh, fan connectors here along it. And you do have up to eight fans on this one controller that you can put in. You also have the options of the uh, LED speed, the mode, and the fan speed. And again, I can cover all this when I power up the system. Um, sadly, the case, this comes with a Molex, which is kind of outdated, and I'm not sure why they didn't uh, just go with a SATA power uh, on this instead of that. Um, this can easily be modified, I do believe. I mean, I've done it before in the past with other devices where you can just take the four leads that you have coming into the, the Molex here and convert it to a SATA power connector, which would be simple enough to wire up, and then you can just eliminate that Molex. So that's something to think about if you're a modder, a PC modder, that would work. You can just modify that to make a SATA connector. The wires on the power part of it are a little thicker. Um, let's see there, they're a little thicker than the fans themselves. Uh, so that's that. Uh, now let's talk about the top I.O. Let's go here. So now if we tip it down so you can see it, we have power, we have reset, two USB 2.0s, your front audio connectors, both headphone and microphone, two USB 3.0s, and the, the button for, again, cycling through the... Um, LEDs. Now this could also be used as a secondary reset or a secondary, you could use it as a, you know, they both have clicky sound, so you could use this as a secondary reset or maybe clear CMOS or whatever you might want to use or just not use it at all. It does have a glossy finish to this, um, like a piano gloss to this, which is a, again, that's, I'll talk about pros and cons in a little bit. Um, the front of the okay let's switch over here this way Oof. this case is actually quite light compared with the glass taken off now i'm going to back you up and then i'll show you the rest of this okay so let's bring you back up okay right there now I'll tip you in a little bit now this is a magnetic dust filter um I would suggest where, and again, it's just if you're going to be using uh, it for exhaust, it will be fine. Um, it's aesthetically pleasing with the case, so it's it's fine just to leave it on there, as you can see. And this light, I don't know how good it is, but again, it's aesthetically pleasing where you could just, you know, leave it on there and be fine with it. Now, take this off for a minute, and you'll notice that in here, if I can get it in the light, there is a track of multiple multiple areas where you can mount fans on, um, all the way down, all the way down. Uh, so again, you could mount, uh, there's different radiator supports, I don't have them on my notes right now, um, but you could fit up to at least 240 or 280 in here now. Speaking of which, on the inside, when the normal motherboard tray would be right here, you got you could put a you could put twenty five millimeter fan, and maybe a twenty five millimeter radiator, and that would give you about fifty millimeters of clearance, right there. Uh, so that would work there, and so forth. Now, let's talk about. And she'll go back around here and back you up a little bit because I want to get the. I'm going to try to. Let me lay this down. Okay. All right. So, let's move these things out of the way for a moment. All right. My neighbors. Oh, gosh. I love them. All right. So, yes. We, we look down into the bowels of the case here. You'll see that, you know, see these wiring, the way they're wired up, the, 
the way they wired up the fans and everything. Um, obviously, they just it's a, just a quick a quick job to get the wires in there and get it ready for shipping. So obviously, they're not planning on any of that. Now, here is a little interesting thing. I'll bring it down here. So here is your RG, here is your addressable RGB connector off of that hub that I was telling you about. So yeah, it does have that, which means that. Where did I put the hub? Oh, it's over here. So that would mean then either dark flash or let me see. Let's put that around here. Let's see. Yep. So yes, it would it could you could hook up a three pin LED strip to this. Uh, and have it controlled by this control. I'll have to look into seeing if the dark flash has a uh, addressable LED strips so that will be for this. Uh, again, I'm not sure just yet. Uh, again, if you look here, motherboard sync. This is where you would take the proprietary plug for the motherboard sync. And let's just take a look here, see which way it goes. Because there's obviously going to be a way that it's going to go in. And there's obviously going to be a way that it's going to fit. So if I'm looking at this correctly. Okay, yeah, you have, let me get in the camera. If it will focus. Okay, yeah, there we go. Um, you can see there's two little notches. There we go, two little notches. And those two little notches face up. So that it just plugs straight in, nice and smooth. And there you go. So again, this is your addressable motherboard sync. Most motherboards, um, Gigabyte, Aorus, uh, Asus, and other motherboards do have this three-pin uh, addressable connector. So they, that is good to have. Okay, so again, let's move these cables out of the way. So we can take a look at okay so down here you have your 3.5 slash 2.5 drive trays and as you can see it says right here ssd 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 in this area which means that's where you would mount your ssd you could also mount an ssd yeah so that's how it is okay and this is for your hard drive underneath your hard drive um it is just a plastic, very plastic uh, type of rail and things like that. There's two of them, as you can see. Let me put this one here. You just simply pinch and lift out. And again, it says right on it SSD, HD. So hard drive or SSD, if you wish to mount them there. Now, we will get to the bottom of the case in a minute. Look over here. Let me get this up here. Okay, so in the bag that comes with obviously your screws for your mounting your hard drive down and so forth. There's a little baggie of various mounting screws and so forth for your motherboard and whatnot. The um, comes with some wire ties right here. Okay. And then again, it also comes with can drop another wire tie. Shame on me. All right. It also comes with a very basic remote, as you can see here, red, green, blue, uh, and then other different options uh, for other modes and things on the on that. Um, so that's that. And then again, these are just motherboard screws. Oh, and I'll bring you back to that in just a minute. Now, if we take a look closer, let's get you in closer. Oops, sorry. Don't want to make you seasick here. If you look down into the belly of the beast, there we go. So, yeah, you have your two hard drives here. Obviously, they are riveted in, so you can't remove this. You could drill out the rivets right here, here, on either side, down there. And then here and down here you can remove this out and then it would give you more space for 
uh, for your cables of your power supply and so forth. Um, standard power supply right here. Uh, I wouldn't go very. I wouldn't go with a higher than an 850 or even a thousand watt because anything higher than that may not fit again because you have this cage here and then here, so that's going to uh, impede your ability to um, set things up. So let's take a look at a couple things that I think are oddities in this case. So let's slide this back in here. Okay. Oh, and the uh, these little things right here are actually rubbery. Take a look at that. Oops, up in the camera. <laughs> they actually feel rubbery, squishy. So that that helps with vibration, which is a which is a nice touch. Which is a nice touch. So yeah. So when you put them in, you can definitely tell that they're rubber. You can feel that they're rubber. So and they go like that. It's in. All right. So. Let's take a look around over here, up, further up, let's go further up. Okay, there we go, further up. All right, so again, this is a this is the the LED button at the top of the case, which can also be used for reset, which is that's what that is. Okay, move all these cables out of the way. Now you'll notice here there is that says right here. SSD, pardon my neighbors out front. Oh, yeesh. SSD here. SSD here. And the oddity is that obviously you would have SSD here, here, and then down here. But what is this? Well, the manual doesn't mention anything of it. So I'm thinking it might be for a water pump. Or something or a water pump bracket or some sort not sure the manual doesn't mention anything of it and I can't find anything on the uh, company's website for it uh, again you have the five and a quarter uh, bays here where you could actually again eliminate the top fan in the front you could eliminate the top fan here in the front and you could put two uh, 3.5 drive cages up here for additional hard drives, so that would be four hard drives or 3.5 drives that you could put at the bottom and two up here if you're so inclined to do so. Again, no rubber grommets uh, are included in the case. You have another cutout up here for your, your eight pin or whatever. There are plenty of, of tie down points for cable management as you can see in this area. Let's see, we got one, two, and four, five, and six there. We have 7 and 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 tie down points. Now, um, so that's what you have. And then you have your, obviously, you have, let me bring this down a little bit more. There we go. So here's the rubber grommets. And obviously, as you can see, they are just a simple piece of rubber usually used um, in applications where you would you would uh, run a cable through this through the opening right here okay and then you know obviously it would be a it would protect against uh, you know the cable getting frayed or cut uh, around the opening of the item like say if you have a plastic box they use these rubber grommets in that to uh, protect the cable around you know where it's passing through somewhere so again, this is a rubber grommet. And again, what you can see is it's a very clever design, but it, all it is is, and if we bring it down a little closer, see, it is nothing more than a six millimeter motherboard standoff. That's it. That's all that is. So again, simply placing the rubber grommet over the top, boom. Now you can mount your glass. Now, speaking of that, while we have while we're talking on the subject, I came up with a similar design a year ago when I have a I have a um, bit fee, I have a um, uh, I have the uh, what is it called again? It's the Dark Base Pro that I have, 
and I was doing this same thing. I had gotten uh, six millimeter um, motherboard standoffs, and I got these kind of rubber grommets, just like this one here. If the camera can focus, got rubber grommets just like this. And then Doc Base Pro that I did, I did the same thing. I mounted them here, and I was going to drill holes so that I could mount either acrylic or glass on the case on both sides because the Doc Base Pro only has glass on one side, not both, both sides. So I was going to do the same thing. And interesting enough that this case manufacturer made, came up with that same concept. Interesting. Now let's look at the bottom of the case real quick. On the bottom of the case, not much really to look at. There is this filter down here. Now this filter, they've improved upon the model of the dock flash um, significantly because people had said that originally this mesh was just simply just mesh and it had to fit within here and would just fall out a lot. Well, the dock, uh, dock flash or the company that makes the dock flash phantom actually added magnetic strips to it which is a very nice feature. So in you just slide it under the little tabs. There's a tab here, tab there, and then you can, it's very flexible, and then you can just mount it to there and there, and there and there, and, oh, and then there's two more tabs here. Two, these are wire tie tabs. They look like, like tie downs for wire ties, but they're actually just standoffs where the dust filter will fit in there. Again, looking at the power supply area, uh, there is no rubber grommets uh, for the power supply to sit on. So that would, if you want to get some rubber feet on the inside of this, let me just tip this up. You can see, I think. There we go. Yeah, there is these little, what, very stiff like uh, rubber feet, if you will. Um, but they're really stiff. They don't, they don't, they feel like rubber, but they're really a hard rubber. So I'm not sure if you wanted to get something a little, uh, softer, maybe, um, a different type of material, uh, that could add a little more cushion and absorb vibration. That would probably be better. So let me go put this over here. Spin this around. There goes my screws. <laughs> so let me turn you back up again. Now you obviously can fit quite a few radiators in here, as you can see. And again, like I mentioned, that two 140s in the front, because of the way the mounting brackets are, they don't go all the way to the top. And again, they. The shroud itself, um, there's one area of the shroud. Let's see if I can bring the camera in a little closer without having the thing fall off the table. That would be. <laughs> the thing is that you notice here, let's do this. There we go. Whoop, 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 whoop. There is no cutout to put a longer radiator in. So again, with a 120 and a 120 here. Okay, 120 and a 120 up there. Let me bring the camera back up a little bit. And back a little bit. Okay, there we go. So, let's take a look here. Alright, so, 120, 120, 240 radiator there. You could put a 360 here. Top fan, bottom fan that fan but you again would not be able to go any further because again this fan and the shroud come right up to each other literally comes right up to each other so a 360 in the front or a 240 in the front um, would work uh, looking at this you could uh, think of the way the case the way I read it on the website there is um, multiple configurations that you can do. Uh, check the website for more information on those. I don't have my notes with me here at the moment. 
Now this is just a quick raw video uh, to give you a look around the case. Again, if you look here at the top, you can see there's a plethora of mounting brackets for mounting areas for your radiators and things like that. And surprisingly enough, without the glass on the case, uh, the case is very lightweight, very lightweight. It's just a, uh, it's a steel, uh, maybe aluminum uh, case. It feels very rigid. Doesn't have really any flex to it at all. Give it a really good flex there. Now, one other thing about it, again, this is just an interesting thing, is a cutout window for your uh, power supply so that you could see what power supply you have in there, which is, I guess, a nice touch. It's also a good uh, option for ventilation and so forth. Uh, as for height on coolers, well, let me get a tape measure. Here, hold on. Uh, here we go. Okay, so looking, let me move you up some more. All right, so looking at, and I'm not very good with measurements, so please excuse me. I got a better tape measure. This one's got a bend in it. I don't know how that happened, but all right, so come around here. Now, looking at this, and going in here, we are looking at at least seven and a quarter inches. Oh, no, correction, I'm sorry, I had a diagonal. <laughs> We're looking at about seven inches clearance, but again, you have to accommodate for the motherboard being raised up slightly from the the standoffs. So if you go from the standoffs and then add just a slight thickness to the motherboard, you're looking at really a clearance issue here would be approximately six inches. And that's just a, a rough guesstimate. And again, if you were to um, put in a, a um, graphics card or of that nature, obviously you could, with a radiator in the front, uh, you're looking at at least, you know, a good 10 inch uh, graphics card will fit, work just fine. Um, and again, if we look at here at the top with a 25 millimeter fan and a 25 millimeter, again, radiator, you're looking at a uh, good clearance of about three and a half inches before you run into the motherboard. I would say three inches in American measurements. I don't know millimeters, so please excuse me. Uh, so, again, that was just a quick look at the Dark Flash Phantom case. And I will be back with part two coming up very soon. So we can take a look at what the lights look like and all of that. Move back this camera up a little bit. There we go. So, again, comes with six pre-installed fans. They are ring fans. Uh, they're in the back in the front um, in part two of this video coming up I will power these up and go through the different modes that are on the controller which is right here and we can take a look at what they offer right out of the box and things like that so that was just a quick look and a quick overview so let's get into the pros and the cons before we cut the video uh, before we end the video one of the, it's not really a con, but I would have liked to have seen grommets located in the areas where there, where there should be grommets. A removable power supply shroud would be really nice. Um, unfortunately, it's not a cutout uh, for space for, the, uh, for a bigger radiator would be very nice, especially if you could put a a radiator that went from the bottom all the way to the top that would be uh, very nice again you'd have to be careful with your IO port up here so again a, a, a very tall radiator let me see I actually have one here I was talking about radiators and pros and cons let me take a look here I do have a radiator in stock Oops, sorry, I'm going to drop my microphone sorry about that people I don't want to mess up your 
eardrums with that, I just dropped my microphone off my shirt. Okay, interesting. Now, this right here I have is a 143.3. So let's get this in a picture. So this is this is a 140 times three. So this would be a let's see, 140 times three. That would be a 420. Yeah, 420 radiator. So if we were to put a 420 radiator in here, you could mount it. Say, you know, unfortunately, a 420 will not fit because obviously they're cut out. This is one of those cons I was talking about. Is that if you had the ability to have that cut out, you could, in a sense, mount the radiator to the 140s in the center here and here, and then just have the other fans mounted to the radiator as well, but sitting in its place, uh, which would be fine. But again, without with the cut out there not being there obviously that uh, makes a problem now if we look up here at the top you can put a 140 up here a single 140 a uh, a 280 would be up here a 280 would fit up here um, as we can see right there let's let me move the camera up a little bit so we can see so where my finger is is where they, a you know again a 280 rad could fit up there easily. This is a 30 millimeter thick radiator. Camera. Now, I haven't used this radiator yet. I bought it um, for a build, but I never got around to actually using it. Um, so it hasn't seen any life yet. You could put you know, down here. I'm not sure about the spacing. Look at the spacing on many radiators and many other areas. Uh, sometimes the distance between here uh, matters, and I found that out with some radiators that I that I've purchased. So what we look like we're seeing here. Let me see if I can bring the camera down a little bit. Okay, so looking at this here, and given that this is obviously a 140, so this isn't going to work. But you could possibly put a um, a 240 rad down here, but again, it would have to be up, and obviously couldn't be mounted underneath because obviously the high drive cage is in the way. Um, but you could put a 240 there, and again, you know that would work. Now, according to Dark Flash Phantom on the company that makes them, they only suggest you could put a 140 here. Um, because of the clearance issue uh, that you would have with um, putting a radiator flush against the case and then obviously, you know, mounting your fan and so forth. But I was looking at, and I don't, again, I don't have enough radiators in stock right now to do this. But I believe that right now you have two 120s in here. So a, a 240 radiator could actually fit on this side right here. You'd have your two fans here, your 240 rad right here, and it would actually be fine because it would it'd stick out just enough so that it would find. Obviously, your fill ports would have to be down here at the bottom. Um, you may sacrifice uh, again the space where your graphics card would be if you had an APU and you weren't usually utilizing these two PCI slots. Then yes, you could put a 240 here. With its fill, with its input and output ports here, uh, obviously, would be covering up the two PCI slots here in the here. But again, with an APU, that would work. So again, cons. Again, no cutout here for a larger radiator. Uh, larger radiator space here, here. There is radiator space here and some here. And no grommets. I'd like to see grommets, that'd be nice, but again, that could add to the cost. Um, not really many other cons. I would have liked to seen it uh, maybe instead of a button up above here for the LED um, Type C, that would have been nice. 
Uh, again, this is a tie down for the wires for the fan. Uh, that's okay. Um, another con that I think of is again, I think that they could have maybe uh, maybe a little softer rubber for for vibrate vibration purposes. Yeah, there's no words. Vibration purposes here in the power supply area. Uh, a removable high drive cage completely would be nice. Uh, so that you could just simply have a larger power supply in here if you wished and you weren't using those drive bay cages that would give you a much larger space for that on the pro side um, for the $135.98 that I paid the $20 coupon off of Amazon I would say this is a very good uh, case very solid construction I like the glass option on all three sides the magnetic dust filters are a plus on both, I think, on bottom and on top, which I think are very nice. Um, the thumb screws, mm, I think we could have gone with a little longer thread because I know on a uh, motherboard standoff, it, it, it again is six millimeters, so again, you could have a, a longer thread and that would work better. Um, you may be able to find uh, a six millimeter thumb screw. Uh, if you choose to customize the case in any way, you could do that. And that would work as well. Uh, so where were we at? Okay, so we are almost into one hour into this video. All right, so again, very nice case. Uh, very solid construction. Um, again, one of the pros are that it has six built-in fans with a controller hub, which is really nice. Uh, plenty of ventilation. Um, oh, and speaking of ventilation, since we are on the topic, with the glass on the front and on the sides, uh, given the rubber grommets, uh, again, lead to raising the glass out away from the sides of the panel, the, uh, there is a approximately two millimeter gap along the whole edge and back where the glass sits on the sides. On the front, it's approximately five millimeters. Again, my digital caliper may be a little off. So there's plenty of airflow coming in, excuse me, coming in from the sides, the very tops, the large opening here in the back. Um, the unused PCI brackets there is also, um, again, cutouts there for ventilation. Uh, so again, ventilation is very good. That's another pro that I like about it, that there's plenty of ventilation. I know people have said, oh, ventilation must be terrible. Um, well, in part two of the video, we will take a look at the fans. We will take a look at thermals and things like that because I have an Oris motherboard. Let's spin it over here. An Oris motherboard right there. I have an uh, Ryzen 2400G right there. Right there. I shouldn't point at my stuff. But right there, 2400G. Uh, a Gigabyte Oris Ultra Gaming X470 motherboard there. So in part two of the video, we are going to take a look at thermals. We're going to take a look at uh, how the fans do on cooling. Um, are they um, acceptable um, or should you change them out with another type of case fan that has a better CFM uh, ratio, um, maybe static pressure, uh, maybe high airflow um, fans. But again, as the case stands right now, uh, very good quality. I like it. I think my daughter's going to really like it. Um, so in part two of the video, stay tuned and we're going to take a look at it. Again, this is Celtic Fox East Coast Mods, now known as East Coast Services Tech, uh, signing off. Uh, stay tuned. Sorry for the video being so raw. Again, I uh, you know don't have my studio set up just yet. I'm using my cell phone. I'm using a Bluetooth headset uh, with mic uh, in order to record this video. Uh, but in the future, I will have a better setup and everything like that. So again, if you like this video. Give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Um, subscribe. Click the bell icon uh, for future 
future videos coming up on this new channel that I've created. Uh, many more builds are coming. I have uh, other builds coming. I have a, a 42U rack server that I'm building. Uh, it's very modular. That's coming up in the future. I have a PF Sensor router that I'm going to be building. That's coming up in the future. I'm going to be building a brand new desk with a server rack built into it for underneath as one side for like I can have a video uh, rack mounted computer there and uh, for video editing and then obviously a capture um, rack mounted system in there for video uh, for capturing live stream gaming and stuff. So for now this is again Celtic Fox East Coast Mods now known as East Coast Services.tech. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.